So the Rebels are faced with third down and 22. Got to get to the 42 for a first down. Split backfield, Holder wide left, Brownlee wide right. Draw play, nothing doing. Baldwin is tripped up behind the line as Lish Trice, the other Juco transfer from Northwest Mississippi Community College, makes the tackle. And it will bring up a fourth down. A loss of two, fourth and 24. Memphis State is fired up. Well, they're sending their people. In other words, they feel like that they need to put some pressure on this young quarterback, and it's paying off for them. They're also keeping an alert eye in case of a handoff, draw, this sort of thing. They've got people in the backfield, and they're, and they're disrupting things right now. Charles Childers in punt formation, standing at his own four. Dawson Pruitt is a long snapper. There's the snap, high kick, kind of a wobbly kick. Fair catch called for and taken at the 42 of Memphis State. And that was Glenn Rogers, Jr. Nice hang time by Childers, 40-yard punt. And Memphis State has it at their own 42. Memphis State fans are on their feet. The Tigers are up. That was the end of the quarter as well as the clock ran off. Seven to nothing, Memphis State leads after one quarter. We'll be back after this from your local sponsor. in Oxford. We're opening the second quarter. Memphis State leading 7-0 from their own 42. Benton rolls right to pass. He's going to keep now. He's to the line of scrimmage as he goes back to the middle. Is hit and dropped at the 43. Tony Hervey on the tackle for the Rebels, a big man from Eupora. This reminder, Community Group is Mississippi's number one long distance telephone service featuring nationwide long distance, universal 800 service, operator services, and international calling. To solve your long distance phone problems, call Community Group. Well, they're going to give him two to the 44, so make it second down and eight for Memphis State. Lyman's got some scores we're going to try to work in here in a moment, too. Tigers leading 7-0. They show a power eye look now with a slot to the right. There's a snap on the option this way. Benton is going to keep, cuts it up. Field. He's in midfield, hit at the 49 of Ole Miss, still on his feet, drops and falls at the 46. Boy, this quarterback with a nice job of running there. Jeff Carter, the free safety, makes the tackle. It's a first down for the Tigers. Here's some scores, some final scores from this afternoon. Tennessee defeated Mississippi State 40 to seven. A final score, Southern Mississippi over Alabama, 27 to 24, a big upset over in Birmingham. And some more scores in a moment. A 10 yard gain for the quarterback, Keith Benton. First down for Memphis State at the Rebel 46. Tigers already leading seven to nothing. There's a snap, Benton rolls out left. Looking, looking, soft toss, it's up in for grabs. Carter intercepts at the 30. He's to the 40, to the 50. Cuts back toward the middle of the field, dropped at the Memphis State, or the, uh, yeah, Memphis State 42-yard line. Jeff Carter saw that one up for grabs, and the free safety junior from Tuscaloosa went up to make the interception. He's the young man, Lyman, that last year had to step in for Todd Sandroni and finish off the season with a Liberty Bowl honor. Came, came to Ole Miss as a walk-on, but he's on scholarship this year. Nice interception by Carter. There was heavy traffic. Chauncey Godwin was there, too. Let's go down to Stan. They just kind of threw it in a sea of red. Quickly, Stan. That was a little floater up there. More about it after this play, David. Split backfield. Shouts back to throw for the Memphis State 42. He's going to step up in the pocket. Fire long. Got a man wide open to the 10. Five. Touchdown. It's Tyrone Montgomery. His first catch as an Ole Miss Rebel. The 5'11", 183-pound junior from Greenville, Mississippi, and a transfer from Tyler, Texas Junior College, beat his man for a 42-yard score. The Rebels are back within one. 13.35 to go in a quarter. Well, it didn't take long after the interception, Lyman. Well, talk about turnovers. Memphis State got one following a fumble. The Rebels got one following a pass interception. Montgomery left the Memphis State defensive back, Glenn Rogers, Jr., in his wake. And this is an experienced man, a senior from Memphis. Brian Lee to attempt the point after. His kick is up and good. By the way, Brian Lee has had an outstanding 
of preseason workouts. He has been hitting the ball well. 7-7. We're all tied up. 13-35 to go. Back after we hear from CarQuest and Budweiser. Remember, know when to say when. Smith will kick off for Ole Miss. We're tied at 7-7 with 13.35 to go in the second quarter. The ball taken at the one-yard line by William Arnold. Comes back in the middle to the 20. Hit and knocked off his feet at the 26-yard line. And up was Johnny Dixon, who is a true freshman from Harvey, Louisiana, one of the signees. He's 6'1", 191. And they say this guy can stick it. Oh, yeah, and he is so football-oriented. They say he is one of the probably one of the finest defensive backs in the country last year, and he chose to cast his lot with Ole Miss. The ball there. at the 26 of Memphis State, first and 10. First quarter Ole Miss we had with 46 yards offense. Memphis State was 63. Officially they had 44-63, so we're almost on the money. Around the left side, nothing doing. Roger Hancock up and makes the tackle. At the 25 as Larry Porter tried to sweep left. And he's hit and upended and may have even lost a yard. Let's go down to Stan about the interception of the touchdown. Stan, we converted quickly. Well, Jeff Carter stepped right in. That was just floated out there. And Jeff read it perfectly, picked it off, and got Ole Miss going. You know, last year Ole Miss led the SEC in turnovers, takeover ratio. They got their first one there. An interesting note, second quarter under Billy Brewer, Ole Miss has outscored Memphis State 68-7. to Like those numbers, second down. For Memphis State, second and 11 from the 25. Give off the right side. It's Porter again. He has stacked up a swarming Rebel defense. Coach Robert Henry's got to be proud of what he's seeing right now. Philip Kent, the left outside linebacker, and Sean Cobb up to make the stops for Ole Miss. Oh, they're just playing some great defense along that line of scrimmage. Uh, like I say, takeovers, giveaways, that's, uh, that's all part of the football game, but the one who can come out with the edge usually has a pretty doggone good season. Third down and 10 from the 26. They gave him a yard, Porter. Memphis State is 0 for 3 on third down conversions. I formation. Benton fakes, rolls out left. He's in trouble. In the backfield, gets away. Fires long down the sidelines. It's going to be caught at the Memphis State 35 over Chauncey Godwin. Godwin turned to look back. At that moment, Memphis State, Russell Jones was able to get him off of him, went up in the air and caught it over, or rather Russell Copeland. It was Copeland, the sophomore from Tupelo, that went up over Chauncey Godwin, who also is from Tupelo. And a nice play by Benton because he was in real trouble. A 42-yard pass to the Rebel, 32-yard line. Wow. Great catch by Copeland, and Chauncey Godwin looked like he stopped running for just a moment. First and 10 for Memphis State. At the Rebel 32, score tied 7-7, 11.50 to go in the first half. Benton on the option to the right. Is hit in the backfield, gets away, dives forward inside the 30 to the 29. The Rebels had him stop for a yard loss. He squirted away. Philip Kent was there along with Pete Harris. They finally got him down, and they're going to spot him at the 28-yard line. He gains four yards <laughs> and was looking at being down for a yard loss. Yeah, at least. So second down and six for Memphis State from the Rebel 28 near hash mark. Wide left goes John Bush and Russell Jones in the slot. I formation for Memphis State. There's the snap. Give straight ahead. Porter hit at the line. Spins. Dropped after maybe a yard gain. The freshman running back for Memphis State. Victor Lester up to make the tackle. Porter 
made perhaps one of the best debuts of any player in the country last week. He had 206 yards on 23 carries and scored three touchdowns against Memphis State. It all went for a sister kissing, though, 24-24 tie, but, yeah, but an impressive sure. start for him. Sure is better than a loss. Oh, he's a, he's a great runner, but I'm going to tell you something. This, this quarterback that they've got might be one of the best runners that they've got in that backfield. Well, he got maybe a half a yard. We'll say no gain. Third down and six from the 38-yard line, or rather the 28-yard line from the 28 of Ole Miss. One back in the backfield. There's a snap. Option this way. Benton fakes, keeps to the 20, sidesteps. He's knocked off his feet at the 18-yard uh, line. He's got the first down with ease, and again, the Rebels had a shot at him. Pete Harris will make the tackle, but Philip Kent had him in the backfield, and uh, Benton just eluded him. Boy, if Memphis State would have to do it over, they might have liked to have started the season this week with a healthy Benton, and of course they didn't get to use him last week against Arkansas State. First down for Memphis State, it was a 10-yard gain to the 18-yard line of Ole Miss, high formation. 10-10 to go, score tied 7-7. Benton rolls out left, sets up in the pocket, now runs again. He's in trouble, pulled down and sacked at the 25-yard line. That time, Sean Cobb said, enough of this. Let's put him down. The senior from Jackson, Tennessee, Central Mary High, who led the Rebels in tackles last year, corralled him and sacked him for the loss at the 24-yard line. Well, what made that play possible was a real good deep coverage on the part of the Ole Miss secondary. And... Uh, he wanted to throw the football, but because of the coverage, he had to hesitate, and he had that arm cocked, and uh, Sean Cobb, like you said, said, well, enough of this. A six-yard loss to the Rebel 24. Memphis State is faced now with second down and 16. The ball is squarely in the middle of the field. A slot to the right with Russell Copeland and William Arnold. Eye formation for Memphis State. Rebels showing a four-man front back to throw. And going deep is Benton. He overthrows everybody. Carter goes back in the end zone to try to pick it off in the end zone. Couldn't do it. It was intended for Russell Copeland. That ball either, either sailed on him, Stan, or he intentionally just got rid of it. He let it fly, and it took off on him. Uh, Carter was back there, but the ball was overthrown. You know, Copeland made that great catch over Johnson Godwin to get the Tigers down here. In high school, he was an all-state center fielder. And David, you know how center fielders like to go after a baseball, and he went after that one. Lyman must be reading my mind, because I was going to say two things that he brought out. Mr. Benton is extremely quick. He's causing the Ole Miss defensive lineman some trouble. They've had him hemmed in a couple of times. He's gotten away. And the last play before that, they had great coverage in the secondary, as Lyman mentioned. He has a Quinn Grovey type look yeah. of Arkansas. Third down and 16 for the 24. There's the snap. Benton, whoop, we stopped the play. Flags may have been delay of game. I see a zero on the clock. Okay. Delay of game. The Tigers will be backed up five yards to be faced with third and 21. The penalty situation to this point, two on Memphis State for 10 yards, one on Ole Miss for five yards. Both teams have four first downs we have at this point. And other notes statistically, Porter from Memphis State has nine carries for 13 yards. Benton, though, has seven carries for 32 yards. Third down and 21. The ball just inside the 30. Between the 30 and the 29, Benton in the pocket, throws over the middle, it's incomplete! Knocked away by Sean Cobb at the 15. It was intended for Russell Copeland, the linebacker Cobb was back deep, Lyman, and yep. jumped up and got a piece of it. Well, that's part of his responsibility is in coverage like that, he's to go back and help cover anything coming out of the middle. And he did that, I don't know if Memphis State here now is gonna attempt a field goal or not. He was kicking from the 42, well, from the 42 yard line earlier, in practice and he was hitting a lot of them. So he's got the range. So the field goal kicker is Joe Allison. And Allison will be hitting this one. The ball will be placed at the 41 or the 36. It's gonna be a fake. They're gonna keep it in run. There's a hole up the middle. Hit though and dropped to the 22. Way short of the first down is the holder for Memphis State. This was going to be a 46 yard attempt and the holder for uh, Memphis State, who is the punter, Jeff Fight, just picked it up, Stan, and tried to run. He had a hole, but they had too much yardage to try to gain. Well, it's still a good play, because uh, chances are he's not gonna kick a field goal, and, it, and, and the Rebels would've got the ball about 10 yards further back up exactly. the field. Exactly. The ball at the 21 instead. Ole Miss with first down and 10, score tied 7-7. Blitz by Memphis State, out pass is caught and then dropped. Are they going to say yes or no? Montgomery yeah. had it, dropped it, incomplete. Bring it back, second down and 10 
from the 21 yard line. Boy, the Rebel line stand did a nice job of picking up those two blitzing linebackers of Memphis State. You know, Ole Miss has got a very experienced offensive line. We talked about it a lot in preseason. Uh, that they started getting better and better last year, and with the exception of a couple of occasions in the first half, it's given Rush Showers plenty of time. You got to watch Tyrone Montgomery. This guy has got some speed, and a, a very interesting story to tell you about him later on. His first step is about as fast as any back I've ever seen. Thigpen comes right up behind the right guard. Back to throw is Showers. Pumps one, fires long. He's got Montgomery complete at the 48. He spins and then is pulled out of bounds as the Rebels have a first down on the tackle. For Memphis State is Glenn Rogers, Jr. The Rebels have been picking on the senior, Glenn Rogers, Jr. He's an outstanding defensive back. The right corner, and Montgomery spun and made a big gain. They're trying to run some patterns, too, that'll dictate some man-to-man -man coverage, and they feel like that their receivers, if they can get them in position like that, they've got great athletes at the receiver positions this year. They feel like they can beat them. 26-yard gain to the Rebel 47 is where it's spotted. Thick pin straight ahead in heavy traffic. Gets close to midfield. Dropped to the 49, it appears. He'll get a couple, maybe three. Let's go to Stan about his story on Mr. Montgomery. Well, you most of you know the Montgomery name is extremely famous in sports, particularly in Delton Greenville, Wilbur Montgomery, and Tyrone's older brother. And I got to tell you still how he got here. At Christmas, Wilbur was visiting our television station to do some promos. And I asked him how Tyrone was going, doing. He said, fine, he's looking for a place to play. I called Coach Brewer. Coach Brewer got in touch with Wilbur, and Tyrone is here, and he caught a touchdown pass already. <laughs> so Stan has a little input in that one, maybe. <laughs> Back to throw is Shouse. Fires far side. is way overthrown. Russ sails one over the head of Montgomery, who is out, uh, out about the 40. Yeah, you'd need a elevator shoes to get up to that one. Shouse is... Uh, 112 yards passing. Okay, 112 yards passing at this point. The Rebels are faced now with third down and eight. It was second and eight from the 49. Now third down and eight from the 49-yard line. Near hash mark. Jeffrey Holder's in and wide left. Split backfield. Ball one and thick pin. Now thick pin comes right up behind the right guard, Perry. There's a snap. Back to throw is Shouse. He's firing long. Got Brownlee. It is dropped at the 25 on an out route. He Faked inside and got his man off his hip, Reginald Jones, the cornerback, then went out. The ball was there. Let's go down to stand. Was it on the money or not? It was on the money. You oh. got to give a great deal of credit to Mr. Jones, who at the last moment stripped it from uh, Benson Brownlee. Boy, Russ put that one right on the money. So uh, Reginald Jones recovered there. Great throw. I, uh, the defensive man just did one heck of a job. Here again, it was single coverage back there, and they feel like that they can complete some passes in situations like this. Memphis State likes single coverage and blitzing a lot. Fourth down and eight from the 49. The Rebels will punt. Childers in punt formations from the Rebel 49. Here's his kick. Fair catch called for and taken at the 15-yard line by Glenn Rogers, Jr. So the Tigers will have the ball. 7.29 to go in the first half. It's 7-7. Seven to seven. Ole Miss and Memphis State dead even. A 36-yard punt for the Rebels. Memphis State scored after a Rebel turnover in the first quarter. As Maurice Shaw fumbled the ball, Memphis State went 38 yards for a touchdown. Porter went the final yard. Then the Rebels took advantage of an interception. Jeff Carter with an interception. The Rebels then immediately had the touchdown pass to Tyrone Montgomery to tie the game in the second quarter. That's where we are now in the second period with 7.29. It was the first play of the second period, the touchdown for Ole Miss. Flags everywhere, give right side. It's Porter who stacked up and pushed back after about a yard gain. And I think the play was blown dead. Gary Abide was there. Appears to be motion against Memphis State. Offsides Ole Miss, offsetting penalties. No, it's, it's not offsetting. It's, it's against Ole Miss. Okay. Offsides against the Rebels. Five-yard markoff. We'll put it at the 20-yard line. Memphis State had first and 10 at the 15. They blew the play dead. They said Ole Miss was offsides. Five-yard penalty to the 20. And the Tigers will have first down and five. 7.22 to go in the first half. Ole Miss seven. Memphis State seven. The clock starts again. Tigers send wide right. John Bush. Russell Copeland is wide left, eye formation. Bush is in motion now the opposite way. There's a snap, gives straight ahead. Not much running room there for Leon Bosby, the fullback, sophomore from Fairhope, Alabama, gains a couple. Reggie Parrott 
In, inside linebacker normally backs up Sean Cobb is there for the tackle. Chris Mitchell came up from his strong safety position to help out. So Memphis State now will have second down and three. But a two-yard gain after a five-yard penalty in that case puts you in pretty good shape. It's, it's as if you gained seven on the first play. So second down and three for Memphis State. From their own 22-yard line, Copeland comes wide right. This time wide left is Russell Jones. He is the brother of Reginald Jones on the defensive side of the ball from Memphis State. Eye formation, Benton, draw play, Porter sweeps the outside, a flag is down. Chris Mitchell comes up, makes a hit, he gets away to the 25 and tackled there. Loose ball, but they say he was down. It is enough for the first down, but there is a flag in the backfield of Memphis State. I think Memphis State's backing up. They're anticipating a penalty against them. It was a four-yard gain for a first down, but it's not going to count. It's not going to stand. Well, it's a motion penalty against Memphis State, and that uh, kind of puts them back and makes them even as far as penalties are concerned in this drive. So put it back at the 22-yard line and uh, replay the down. Reggie Parrott, Chauncey Goblin, and Jack Mur Muirhead came up to finish off the play after Chris Mitchell could not stop Porter, but all that goes for naught. Five-yard penalty makes it second down. Still for Memphis State, brings the ball back to the 17-yard line. Clock is running. They've got five seconds to snap the ball. They're going to have to hurry up. Four, three, two, one. No, they didn't do it. Hey, 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 they let him snap. Now they throw the flag. We were watching the countdown clock stand, and it just ran off, and Benton didn't know anything about it. You know, that's one, one penalty if I was a coach that would really just just really get on get under my skin. You, you know you have so many seconds to get the play off, and at each end of the field there's a clock that's running. If you can't get it off, you would think you would call a timeout instead of take a five-yard penalty, but Memphis didn't. He just didn't see it. I guess he didn't. The well, coach will remind him of it, I'll bet you. <laughs> a second and three turned into a second and eight, now turns into a second and 13 from the 12-yard line. Draw play, Porter coming to the right side. He's to the 15, hit hard by Reggie Parrott and a couple other Rebels in there and dropped at the 19-yard line. A gain of about seven will bring up a third down and about six will wait on the spot. They put it on the 19-yard line, third down and six for Memphis State. The Tigers have got to get to the 25. In for Ole Miss is Todd Sandroni coming back from that knee injury. He's playing free safety. The Tigers send two men wide left. How about a Sandroni intercept? That'd be nice. Third down and six. It's a draw play. Instead, Porter picks his way to the 22, and up to make the hit is Reggie Paird. And boy, Paird is laying some lumber. Not enough for the first down. It will bring up a fourth down for the Tigers. Gain of three, maybe four. We'll wait on the spot. Again, Memphis State lineman just decided, hey, let's try that draw. Porter. Moves very well laterally, left and right, picking holes, but the Rebels are recovering well. And stopped him short of the first down. Fourth down and three. It was a gain of three on that last play. From the 22-yard line, fight is in punt formation. Vincent Brownlee deep to receive. We're tied 7-7 with 4.20 to go in the first half. High, booming punt. Brownlee is going to let it hit. And it hits into the legs of some of the Rebels trying to block. And fortunately for Ole Miss, diving on the football to save the day was Dwayne Amos, Stan. Rebel fans, Dwayne Amos was the man that uh, the ball bounced up and hit. And Dwayne was trying to get out of the way, but it took one of those short hops, hit him on the leg. But very alertly, he was able to recover. There's a guy who missed last season's opener because he had the bleeding ulcer. He was in the uh, schedule to be a running back starting. He's now made the switch to the secondary and done a good job. First down and 10 for the Rebels from their own 34. It was a 44-yard punt. Split backfield. Brownlee's wide left, Holder wide right. Memphis State has a three-man front and five looking linebackers standing behind him. Kind of a strange look. The pitch to Jim Earl Thomas, who's in the game. Nothing doing as he sweeps right. He's stacked up in the line of scrimmage. No gain, maybe even a loss. And the tackle is Troy Thompson. Thompson is uh, the youngster we talked about is a JUCO transfer from Northwest Community College. Well, he did lose about a yard on the play. Yard loss to the 33. So make it second down and 11. 3.46 to go. The clock is running. Ole Miss 7, Memphis State 7. Tigers struck first. The Rebels return the favor. Shows is back to throw with two receivers wide left. He's going to fire deep for Brownlee. Overthrows everybody. Diving for the attempted interception at the 30. 
is Glenn Rogers Jr. incomplete, make it third down and 11. Brownlee was flying down the left hash, but it was too high for him to pull it down. Brownlee will come out, John Moore will go in for the Rebels. Moore is a junior split in from Jackson, Mississippi. Caught only one pass last year, but that's about as much experience as we've got from a year ago receiving wise. Slot to the left. In the slot is Derek Owens, a Juco transfer from Northeast Oklahoma. Chows fires. He's got Owens complete at the Rebel 40. He's down the sidelines of the 45, across midfield, knocked out of bounds of the 49. First catch of the year for Derek Owens, Stan, and it's a first down. Rush Lyles put that one on the money. You know Ole Miss has got a lot of uh, receivers, but not very many with experience. I think they've got some good ones, some junior college transfers and company. I think as they get more and more experience and learn the system, they obviously are going to get better and better. And they've got pretty good speed out there, too. An 18-yard gain for Derek Owens to the Tiger 49. Glenn Rogers, Jr., the cornerback, made the tackle for Memphis State. Near hash, split backfield, slot right. On the option to the left, there's the pitch to Maurice Shaw. He's to the 40, to the 35, knocked out of bounds. Russ Shals took a tremendous lick, made the pitch at the last moment to Maurice Shaw. The free safety, Jeremy Williams, caught him downfield. And it's enough for the first down. They say he went out at the 36-yard line. A 13-yard gain for Shaw. So he makes up a little bit for his fumble. Maurice Shaw from Tullahoma, Tennessee. is one of Lyman's favorite players. Oh, boy, I like this youngster. Big, heavy, strong running back. Shounds was bumped up a little bit. He's still in the game. Out route overthrows Derek Owens at the 30. Owens with a quick little out. About five or six yards downfield. It was high and overthrown. Shounds is holding his right hand. Shounds is coming out. We're going to see a backup quarterback. Steve Davis has moved up to the number two slot. He is a 6'2", 190-pound junior from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Played at Boyd Anderson High School. This is his first appearance as a quarterback for the Ole Miss Rebels. He has had a pretty good fall. Tommy Luke was in the number two position, and Davis kind of moved ahead of him in the last week as Luke had an injury that slowed him some. Back to throw is Davis. He's firing far side. Interception throws it right into the hands of a Tiger at the 30. They head the other way to the 40, to the 45. Fumble picked up by Memphis State, though, and dropped there. I don't know who got the interception. But for Steve Davis, he just threw it right into the hands of the Tiger. There wasn't a Rebel around. So well, Memphis State takes advantage of the backup quarterback having to come in cold. He really underthrew the ball. The man was deep and was open, but he underthrew the football, and it was right into the hands of the corner over there. The interception was made by 97 Jeff Sawyer, the linebacker, a sophomore from Mobile, Alabama. He got hit and fumbled, and then Memphis State's Bobby Avery recovered the fumble. And now we've got a flag as well. Or do we not? Was there a flag? Stan? Uh, uh, there was one, but I guess they just said forget it. I didn't mean to throw it. But uh, okay. Tigers have it. Very unusual for a quarterback to come in un untested like that and not take any snaps and throw a pass. From the 49, just shy, shy of midfield, Memphis State with the ball in their own territory. Give left side, stacked up at the line, nothing doing. Leon Bosby is stopped. Victor Lester, one of the Rebels in there, the senior from Jacksonville, Florida, and Lee's McRae Junior College in North Carolina. Okay, let's go down to, to Stan, and don't he's know, got a report on Rush House. Don't exactly know the extent or the seriousness of it, but uh, Rush House uh, heading to the Ole Miss uh, dressing room. Uh, had an ice pack on his right hand. They've taken it off now, and hopefully it's nothing serious and Russ can get back in the second half. That was a gain of one to midfield. Now Benton rolls out right to throw. He's being chased. Sets up, fires long downfield. The ball is knocked away, and then caught by Memphis State at the three. What an acrobatic catch by John Bush. Jeff Carter stepped in front of the football and was going to pick it off. It deflected off his hands, popped up in the air, and John Bush is able to pull it down for a 47-yard reception and talk about luck. 